it's it's evoking this this like like grotesque art style, and it's kind of looking at how these are all kind of the voices of the protesters, like crying out and and you know trying to get heard, and kind of grotesqueness of it to me is really good at evoking how violent the movement was getting and how you know involved all the protesters were. I think it's super super neat, and I've never seen anything like it before coming here. So. My name is Miss Nakamura. I'm Japan Studies librarian here at the uh, Hamilton Library. And then uh, I'm so pleased to introduce two our uh, first Japan collection travel awardees, Adam Manfredi and David Wallace. Finally, we are welcoming them in cooperation with Center for Japanese Studies. For my research, I'm really interested in how the protest movement has been narrated or talked about in its aftermath. And what I've been doing um, just in the past few days is looking at accounts written by students during the protest themselves. And then also there's several accounts written right after the, the end of the protest, these violent sort of um, anti-governmental um, protests and this intersect fighting that marked the end of the student movement really caused many of the students to have a self-reflection. And this really allows me to understand how students were talking about what they wanted to do and what they were doing during it and right after. And I think a lot of these, I, I spent time doing research in Japan and a lot of the material here isn't even accessible in Japan. Or if it is, it's spread out between many different areas and trying to get access to it is difficult. And so having all that material in one place and the variety of it has been um, you know, immensely helpful. And one of the things that's been really helpful here is to sort of be able to take a step back and think about my research within the context of the material here to understand how I want to move forward. So a lot of it is just reading background material and reading newspaper articles of, of, uh, during the time and these manifestos to understand, okay, what's my next step? And then I think having that material is gonna be really, really influential in helping me establish the historical background of the moment I am talking about to understand um, not only what has been told about it, but how that telling of the protest has changed from during the time of the protest, the immediate um, aftermath, and even 10, 20, and 30 years later. This type of research, obviously the archival material is the main reason I'm here, but the other reason is to develop connections between scholars of Japanese studies. And that community is gonna help serve me in the future when I'm moving forward with my research and also um, to be able to share my work and get feedback on it in a very immediate way while I'm conducting the research. I think you don't get that many times. Oftentimes we go to an archive, we work there, and then we leave and then go talk about it to someone else, maybe a year later or at a conference. And then sometimes a, someone at the conference will be like, did you think of this? And you're like, I wish I had gotten that material at the archives. Um, but having this uh, discussion um, while I am here, while I still can go back and go, oh, I didn't know you had that here, um, is invaluable and it's something that I think is particularly unique um, to the funding that I've received here. My research is on a, uh, uh, the main uh, international airport to get into uh, Tokyo. It's called Narita. It's in Chiba Prefecture, about two hours outside of the city. And um, for like 10, 15 years, there were, there were these massive violent protests against the construction of it by pe the people that lived there on the land and didn't want uh, the government to confiscate their land to build the airport. And um, the tower they built was kind of... Uh, made to block the runway so that they could never, even after they had finished the runway, they couldn't take planes off from it, meaning the airport couldn't open. And that was kind of their last uh, ditch effort to stop them from opening the airport before uh, it finally opened in 1982 after the police kind of violently brought their tower down. So far, I found it very, very full, very varied in terms of uh, the, the kind of options of, you know, there's, there's lots of things here, there's are, you know, primary sources that I can't access outside of Japan and uh, being able to come here and, and see things that I expect might be rare even within Japan has is, is been really, really wonderful. 
this is all contributing to my master's thesis. Um, I'm, I'm kind of in the process of finishing that and um, taking the, this coming year to uh, return to Japan and do a year of Japan uh, Japanese language study at, at the Inter-University Center at Yokohama. And uh, it, it will give me some time to reflect on everything that I've found here and uh, bring that thesis together and make it much, much stronger. Uh, one thing that I set out to do in coming here was try to find connections that the protesters that I'm studying, these protesters against the construction of Narita Airport from how they were making connections with other protest movements across Japan and around the world. And uh, already so far I found uh, kind of uh, correspondence and, and newsletters from all these groups and that has really really impressed me so far. I, the Japan Travel Grant um, really yeah, for me it it made it an option to come here to the University of Hawaii. I mean um, it has it has really enabled me to 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 come out and to uh, experience a set of resources that I wouldn't be able to otherwise and for that I'm very very thankful. In the end I hope to become a professor naturally. I would like to have a um, a position teaching real to me the most important thing is is being able to kind of expose students to to my own kind of love you know share that love for Japanese history and Japanese culture with them and uh, to kind of broaden their their perspectives broaden their horizons about the world thanks for watching this and uh, you know as you know Japan collection has many more titles including the Takazawa collection, but also we have Satsuma collections and Kajiyama collections, which features all sorts of different stuff, from historical stuff, from Edo period, to the contemporary stuff, or pre-modern or early modern literature materials. So if you are interested in, don't hesitate to contact us. Thanks so much.